In this lecture, we'll talk about the Foster's Resonance Energy Transfer or FRIT. This section is included in Methods in Biology, CSIR Unit Number 13. So let's learn about the concept in next 10 minutes. We'll talk about the principles of FRIT, applications of FRIT and limitations of FRIT. By the way, this particular topic is included in Unit 13. Questions are asked in part B or part C and difficulty level is overall easy. You just need to understand the basis of FRIT and its biological application. This is not exclusive for FRIT for any microscopy technique. You need to understand the application of it and the principles that are used in this particular technique. So in terms of resources, you can use Pathfinder's uh, life science book sets. This particular concept could be found in uh, the Biophysics and Molecular Biology book. Alternatively, Wilson and Walker's book is also good for these purposes. If you want further resources, further information, Nikon Microscopy U website could be good. So the easiest way and the most precise way to revise this is using this particular book. And this is included in chapter number six, page number 89. All the links, Amazon links are provided in the description. Okay, so let's begin our discussion on Froster's Resonance Energy Transfer or FRET. So in this video, we'll talk about what are the principles, applications and limitations. So let's begin. Froster's Resonance Energy Transfer is a mechanism which describes energy transfer between two light sensitive molecules. Like you need to have a donor molecule. In this case, it's shown in blue and the acceptor fluorophore, in this case, it is shown in yellow. So when we illuminate the donor, it should transfer the energy to the acceptor. And as a result of that, acceptor fluoresces. And this phenomena is known as FRET. So this particular technique is a non-radiative energy transfer method. Our donor chromophore initially is its um, excited state and it might change uh, transfer its energy to an acceptor chromophore through dipole dipole coupling so the molecular interaction which is responsible for fret response is dipole dipole coupling and these two points which are highlighted in red is really important from an exam point of view fret is really sensitive towards distance between these donors and acceptor so if the distance is less than 10 nanometers, FRET is possible. In contrast, if the distance is more than 10 nanometer, there is no FRET. So overall, FRET is very, very sensitive towards distance. Now using this technique, one can understand protein-protein interactions. So obviously, molecular interactions can be studied using FRET because two molecules will interact when they are close enough, right? So proximity analysis can be done using FRET. The efficiency of this energy transfers is inversely proportional to the sixth power of the distance between donor and acceptor. I completely understand you understand nothing, right? So this is the FRET efficiency equation. E means the efficiency of FRET and it is proportional to 1 divided by 1 plus r by r0. Now what is r? r is the distance between the two molecule and r0 is a characteristic distance where fret efficiency is 50%. So it's fluorophore dependent like for fluorophore to fluorophore capital R0 varies. Now anyway we can plot a graph of efficiency with r by r0 and the graph somewhat look like this. So you can see at this portion of the graph the fret is possible and fret efficiency is high. Why it is high? Because small r is low. Now when small r increases, we can see the fret efficiency also decreases and at a certain level, there would be no fret. Now these r value, r capital R zero values are uh, specific for specific uh, donor acceptor pairs. For example, if we choose the CFP and YFP donor and acceptor pair, then the R0 value would be 4.702 nanometers. Now let's try to understand the FRET from a Zablonski diagram 
uh, perspective and let's look at their absorption and emission spectra. So this is the excitation spectra. So the donor is excited with this particular light and this is how we should expect the donor's fluorescence. And this is how oh, and, and this particular fluorescence is now transferred to the acceptor if it is in proximity and that's why we get the acceptor excited uh, transition state. And this only this is only possible when there is distance uh, less than 10 nanometers. So this energy can be transferred in a, uh, as a function of the distance. So now we understand in this graph what is the excitation and emission spectra for the donor and acceptor and they are quite overlapping in this case. Now the question is how do we perform FRET in a laboratory settings? So in order to do FRET we need a microscope. Obviously it can be done in confocal microscope with the attachment of specific filter specific for the donor and acceptor pairs. Now before that we need to express these kind of donor and acceptor pairs in the cell. So let's say we want to determine the interaction between protein A and protein B. So we have to express protein A coupled with CFP or fused with CFP and protein B coupled with YFP. And then we'll transfect these two plasmid into cells. And we'll be using these cells for our further analysis. Now there are FRED based calcium sensors as well which can determine the presence of calcium. So this is another application of FRED. So in this case what happens there is again a donor and acceptor pair but they are linked together by calmodulin and M13 helix. So the excitation wavelength is 440 nanometer and the emission is 475 nanometer. Now when calcium binds, these donor and acceptor come close to each other. So obviously there could be fret that is possible. And as a result when we excite the donor with 440 four nanometer, it emits at 530 nanometer instead of 475 nanometer. And this shift is due to fret. And fret tells us about the calcium concentration in the cell. So FRET happened, that means there is an elevation in calcium response. And using live imaging, then that live imaging can be done in confocal, two photon or any other setup. Using this live imaging, one can also monitor neuronal activity. So obviously FRET can be used in many other, other particular purposes. For example, looking at cell signaling pathways, let me tell you how. So there are specific FRET based sensors which work like a cyclic AMP sensor. In this case, the excitation is 440 nanometer again. And if FRET happens, this is generally 530 nanometer wavelength of emission. Now when cyclic AMP binds to these particular sensor, it allows the donor, it allows a conformational change which splits the donor and acceptor into distinct portions of this molecule. That means the distance between donor and acceptor is increased. So the earlier if we excited it with 440 nanometer and observed a FRET at uh, 530 nanometer, we won't get it right now. Right now we are going to get an emission of 475 nanometer. That means in short word, FRET would not happen in this case. And the absence of FRET would tell us about the presence of cyclic AMP. So there would be a decrease in FRET. Yep. So using this particular tool, we can measure how much cyclic AMP is generated in a cell. Let's say there is a particular cell which works via a G protein coupled receptor. So upon ligand binding, there should be activation of the G protein which would lead to active activation of the adenylate cyclase and that would generate cyclic AMP. But how do we know as a researcher that cyclic AMP is elevated? So in order to probe the elevation of cyclic AMP, we can use the cyclic AMP based sensors. And these sensors are designed in a way that they mimic the interaction of protein kinase A. So these sensors also use the regulatory subunit of the protein kinase A to which the uh, cyclic AMP binds. Now, when cyclic AMP binds to these sensor or protein kinase A, it does not discriminate between these two. 
and it, this binding is based on affinity but when it binds to the sensor we get to know the level of cyclic amp inside the cell and this is how using fret we can understand how signaling pathways are active or inactive inside the cell so whenever the pathway is off there will be fret and whenever the cyclic amp pathway is on and cyclic amp is produced there would be no fret in this particular sensor right and this is how we would get an understanding of second messenger signaling so there are a couple of limitations of fret and this is discussed here the donor and acceptor fluorophore might exhibit significantly different brightness levels so measuring them could be a problem the presence of bleed through crosstalk crossover all these thing can hinder your result time resolution can be like difficult to maintain so you need a very costly camera preferably emccd or scmos then photo bleaching is a big issue in fret so the fret measurements are not at all easy requirement of special filter sets in microscope and many of the cases these specific filter sets which are dedicated for specific donor and acceptor pair are quite costly so these are all limitations of the fret and we looked at the biological application if you like this video don't forget to like share and subscribe anyway you can get many flashcards and notes in my facebook page like that fluorescence microscopy note you can get notes like these ones you can also follow me on instagram all the link would be in description you can support this channel using the uh, bim upi app or patreon or you can support me via the super thanks option present in the bottom right corner of each video you can pay using paypal paytm or upi all my social media links are pinned into the description box you can follow us all our social media links are present in the description and see you in next video all these videos takes a lot of time to make and lot of research to improve improvise the concepts so please share this with your friends and don't forget to share uh, don't forget to comment and if you have a suggestion put it in the comment we'll try to fulfill that